Glory to God. Is everybody there? Proverbs 22, starting at verse 1. Let's speak it. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. But the simple pass on and are what? Punished. By humility and fear of the Lord. Say it again. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. How many of y'all want to be rich? I mean, rich in Christ. God already prospers us all the time. Rich in Christ honor that means an area of respect and life eternal life these three things are promised to me and you as we maintain the place of humility and the fear of god now the fear of god is reverence honor and respect it says riches honor and life come by humility in the fear of the lord amen, amen. now in this there must be something for you and i to do for you and I to get to the place of humility and the fear of the Lord, we must pursue righteousness. So there must be a pursuit of righteousness in our life. So many times we pursue or get mistracted or, or mis, misled, distracted. That's a new word. <laughs> we'll write that in Guy's Dictionary. <laughs> hey, under the anointing, I said already, I can say anything, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so in this, there is that place where the pursuit of righteousness is required. So many times we're in pursuit of money, jobs, and again, there's nothing wrong with certain things to that degree. You must seek out. But pursuit is constant. It's an area of constant. We shouldn't be in pursuit of money constantly, of a job constantly. Amen? We're to be in pursuit of righteousness, and righteousness comes from the presence of God. So if I'm in pursuit of the presence of God, you won't fall under false fulfillment. You won't get misled. And the anointing will protect you and keep you and teach you and guide you in every way. Remember, God is righteous. He loves righteousness and hates wickedness. Amen? And the throne is established by justice and righteousness. So in this area of righteousness, it's a place where you and I get to where we are pleasing God. Because he is manifesting himself through us. If he sees him in us, it pleases him. Amen. That's why I always share, Jesus is always seeking Jesus. So when he sees him in us, it pleases him. You know, it was accounted to Abraham by obedience. It's righteousness. Because he obeyed him. Amen? But first, you got to be able to hear him. So how can you obey something or someone you don't hear? It's difficult. Amen. So in this, in our pursuit of righteousness, we are actually in pursuit of his presence. In Romans 3. Now, again, to maintain a place of humility in the fear of the Lord, you must be one who pursues righteousness. Amen. Amen. And then what follows? Riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, and life. Romans 3, verse 10. The pursuit of righteousness. Let's speak it. 
As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have forgotten. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their voices, they have practiced deceit. With their what? Their tongues. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, and destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So what does he say? They have not, they are not on the pursuit of righteousness, because there's no fear. Amen? Where there is no fear of God, there is no pursuit of righteousness. These two things go hand in hand. And it says then they, because there is no fear of God. They do whatever they want to do with not thinking that there won't be a recourse. Amen? And the word says what you sow is what you reap. Let's go a little further. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law... The knowledge is the what? Knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood, through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith and Jesus the Christ. Powerful. So in this pursuit of righteousness, <laughs> it's, it's accounted to those of righteousness who pursue righteousness. In this, we see that he, these are called his servants. We are his servants, those who pursue righteousness. The pursuit of righteousness, again, where there is no fear of God, there is no pursuit of righteousness. They go hand in hand. Amen? In Psalm 34. So would God consider someone who is not in the pursuit of righteousness his servant? No. That's why the word says, seek his face, not his hand. Amen. Yesterday we were at a, a, a house doing some work, remodeling a bathroom. And the family there, sweet family, Psalm 34, please. And, uh, you know, the woman there that was... Um, she was a little upset because she couldn't go to church today because she, she had to work. I guess she works for some organization, and every once in a great while they have to work on a Sunday. Actually, she had to work yesterday and, or Sunday and Monday. So she says whenever they call her, she's got to go in. And, uh, and I said to her, I said, we'll take church with you. And she, she looked at me like, I said, and that's the difference between religion and relationship. She was so blown away. She never heard that. She, didn't, she never heard that. 
And she was just, I like that. I mean, I could have stood there all day and thrown out a bunch of phrases, you know. <laughs> had a good old time, just had church right there in the living room. But to me, it was just amazing. Sometimes we don't realize how much we have and how much we know. And, the, and in the pursuit of righteousness, the connection of God that we have. You know, it, your family may be out of order, relatives, but when things happen, they know who to call. Amen? Amen. Well, then, then they say, well, we believe that you're the, the, the closest one to God. And they end up calling and asking for prayer, whatever it is. And then, of course, we say, so does God have your attention? Well, now you get connected. Amen? But there's where it takes that pursuit of righteousness. So that in everything that you and I do, there should always be the pursuit of right. In other words, righteousness is also how we respond. Am I responding in a righteous way or am I reacting in an unrighteous way? Now, if my deeds are unrighteous and I'm not quick to repent, then there is a disconnect or not all the wires are connected. You know what I'm saying? That's where people are hanging onto a thread. But in this, as long as we repent quickly, then the, listen, you'll know if, if you're justifying your unrighteous actions and you know that that closeness is not there and I'm not saying that we don't we can't all fall in the flesh now and then amen but you better step out real quick because you know that living in the flesh causes further separation and then there is no fear of God because there isn't a pursuit of righteousness again it's where the enemy steps in he likes to come in and cause us to pursue so many other things I mean, there's a lot of things in our life that we haven't finished, haven't completed. And the enemy likes to think, put the things in between and say, listen, you need to do this, this, and this. And God is saying, no, I want you to pursue righteousness. And then all things are going to fall into place. What does the word say? Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. So in this, there must be a constant pursuit. If there's a constant pursuit of righteousness, you can be sure that humility and the fear of the Lord will always be manifested. And then what will follow? Riches, honor, and life. Amen? In Psalm 34 and verse 11, let's speak it. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the what? The fear of the Lord. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days? that he may see good. Keep your tongue tied in a bowl. Keep your tongue from what? Evil. <laughs> and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. Listen, you didn't get into trouble without doing something stupid. Hello. So there's obviously something that we did to get in trouble because trouble doesn't just come out of nowhere. We usually bring it on ourselves. Hello. Hello. So trouble comes, God is saying, all right, you need to repent quickly. Why? So I can deliver you. So if you begin to, the, the pursuit and seek righteousness immediately, well, what is righteousness? Repentance. So you repent quick so you're washed by the blood and the Spirit has access. Because it says the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. Well, again, we're the ones that bring trouble on ourselves. You know, so, so many times people blame so many other things, especially in the, in the bill syndrome. And I want to talk about bills, you know. Well, Lord, I need to make amends. I, I need to pay this bill. I need to, well, let's go back a little further. Did you not have the money before, but you decided to spend it on your own pleasures? 
Believe me, we bring our own garbage on ourselves. Does everybody understand? Why? Because God is always providing if we use things correctly. Always. It's when we don't use things correctly that we bring trouble on ourselves. But he sees how goofy we are sometimes. Thank God. And he knows how frail we are. And so he says, come on, quick, repent quickly so I can deliver you. What a loving dad, huh? Let's go to the next verse, verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a what? Broken heart. I would say that's quite repentant. And save such as has a what? Contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. So he knows we're going to make a lot of mistakes. Amen? He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust him shall be condemned. The pursuit of righteousness. <laughs> those are his servants. Amen? It is not the pursuit of works. It's not the pursuit of fame. It's not the pursuit of riches. It's not the pursuit of worldly things. It's the pursuit of righteousness, which means you must pursue his presence. And if we maintain that pursuit, so many times, look at, even when we get in trouble, many, we try to fix it ourselves. All right, how can I fix this? Uh... The first thing the enemy says, call this person. He wants to bring you to the phone instead of the throne. Amen. He always wants to sway you every way possible from the pursuit of righteousness. Because he knows that if you try to fix something yourself, it's going to get worse. Or it's going to be a band-aid. It won't be perfectly fixed. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Psalm 39. <laughs> See, there are many who are on the pursuit of justice. And the purpose they are on the pursuit of justice for is for vengeance. Come on, think about this. Many are on the pursuit of justice. Why? Because they want vindication. Amen? If you pursue righteousness, justice will be added to you. And then vindication will be added to you. It's when you try to skip over the pursuit of righteousness and seek vengeance, amen, it's when we become self-righteous. Does everybody get this? And this is what we have to be careful for because the end, it's like a fine line in these areas that the enemy opens the door to the next thing we find ourselves in trouble. And, and even when we're trying to get out of it, we find ourselves in deeper trouble. Because we want to vindicate ourselves in that area because we begin to pursue justice instead of righteousness. Amen. And that's just because of self-righteousness. Amen. Psalm 39, starting at verse 1. Oh, happy days. We are watching the world in pursuit of justice. There are many in the pursuit of justice. And what are they looking for? Vindication. Amen? But if it starts off with the pursuit of righteousness, justice will come, vindication will come. But then there's a lot of false righteousness words we call self-righteous, and they follow lies and deception because the influence will always mislead them. See, there's that fine line again where you can open the door to light of Christ or open the door to deception of darkness, which one you're leading towards more will begin to open the door more. In verse 1, let's speak it. 
I said I will what? I said I will what? Guard my ways lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle. Praise God. I wonder where you can buy all these. I got a big binky in my office. <laughs> it says, while the wicked were before me. Oh, this is when it really happens. This is where the true reality of where you stand. When somebody's like in your face. And you want to just kill them. Look at it, he says, listen, I, 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 I held my tongue when somebody was in my face. <laughs> I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good. And my soul was stirred up. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burn. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end. <laughs> Why? Because what he was thinking and what he wanted to do, he knew what the end result wasn't going to be good. See, I, I, me personally, I have to avoid a lot of things. I, I, I avoid it. Because I know there's a limitations. Well, I'll pull that Holy Ghost sword out and cut off the restraints. And I don't want to get into that place. If I see abuse or something to that degree, I have to be very careful and hold back myself to a certain degree because I'm not there with, I, I'm against that evil. I hate evil. But, you know, to do evil against evil is the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. So I try to avoid those circumstances. Thank God I only see it on, on the news. <laughs> That's enough. Lord, make me to know my end. And what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am? Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadths, And my age is nothing before you. And my what? Age is nothing before you, praise God. Certainly every man in his best state is but vapor. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. Why? They're seeking after, other, they're in pursuit of other things, aren't they? He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all of my transgressions and, make, and do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. When with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, you make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is vapor. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. And do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner, as all my fathers were. Remove your gaze from me, that I may regain strength before I go away and am no more. You know, there are certain limitations to where um, God reveals himself to us. And, um, and in that, we also become sometimes strangers. Does everybody understand that? As sojourners. Because we're in pursuit of his righteousness and want to know him more. And we lose sight of how much we know of him in our relationship. But yet we want to know more. And that category brings us to another place of you may sense like you're a sojourner or just a stranger with God, but you're really not. Remember what you've had. Amen? Don't look at what you don't have. Remember what you have and use it. Because the enemy will try to bring you into a place where you have no right going there. And you can read this in the scriptures. I mean, look at what happened to Elijah after he just got done slaying 450 prophets of Baal, and he gets a word from Jezebel. What happens to him? He books. Well, what happened that God was with you? We just slayed, called fire down from heaven, you know? Because now he's in pursuit of his, for his life, instead of pursuit of righteousness. 
And then when he finally heard the Lord, he said, what are you doing here, man? Get back to where I told you to go from. Don't worry, I got it all in control. Yeah, but God, hello, where were you? <laughs> no, he's always there. Amen. So we must still maintain this pursuit no matter what. See, this is where people go by how they feel. You can't go by how you feel, even though we'd like to, but we can't. You can't go by how you feel. You have to stand on the word and what he says. You know, as I was speaking to the Holy Spirit this morning, I, I was sharing some things that were going on, and I said, what do you want me to do about this? He said, stand on the word. I said, okay. So I began to confess the word in certain areas and stood on the word. He said, trust me, just stand on the word. No matter what you're going through, just stand on the word. Don't be misled. Continue to pursue righteousness and stand on the word. Everything will fall into place and all things will work to the good. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Uh, let's go a little further. So we see that where there's a lack of pursuit, there's also a lack of fear of God. In Romans 6. Romans. Romans 6. We are all roaming at one time. Hallelujah. Romans 6, verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, do not let what? Sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under the plan. Hello? Everyone say, I'm not under the law. I'm under the, I'm under the plan. Under the plan. Yeah. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to, you, to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to? righteousness but God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin yet you obeyed from the heart that from a form of doctrine to which you were delivered and having been set free from sin you became slaves of righteousness I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh for just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and lawlessness leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members of, as slaves of righteousness for what? Holiness. Now this is pretty wow. Because in this pursuit of righteousness, we know that it will always produce humility and the fear of the Lord. Amen? So in this area, you will find that this is what the world calls holiness. Those who are in pursuit of righteousness will be called holy. Why? Because it's a different character. It's no longer a human carnal character. It's an eternal character. It's the character of Christ who is righteous because righteousness is holiness. Amen? Oh, happy days. We are not under the law but under the plan. We are in pursuit of righteousness which turns into holiness. James chapter 1. James 1. James 1, 16. Is everybody there? Let's grow for it. Do not be what? Don't be what? 
deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadowing of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Hello. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Of course, be doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. Now, does anybody remember what we talked about, the law of the spirit? What's the law of liberty? What's the law? Deny yourself, what? Pick up, sword, and follow. Amen. And continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer or doer of the work. This one will be what? Be what? Blessed. That sounds like riches to me. <laughs> and be blessed. So we are in a pursuit of righteousness, not to receive riches, honor, and, and life, but to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are in pursuit of His presence and His righteousness. So you and I will always carry humility and the fear of the Lord. If it's not there in everything that you and I are doing, then there's been a lack of pursuit and there's been a disconnect. Ephesians 5. We must be swift to hear, slow to outburst, because the wrath of man will produce lawlessness. Ephesians 5. Oh, yes. In verse 8. Oh, man. Let's start at verse 6. Let no one do what? Deceive you. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. We can't lose sight of that. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are, not, which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you, work circumspe you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. They are what? Evil. evil. And they are certainly evil, aren't they? Praise God. <clears throat> Let's go to Matthew 6. So we know that there's constant influence. Again, we are hard-pressed, bombarded. But thank you, Lord, for the secret place. Matthew chapter 6, we will confirm what we talked about. Verse 32, uh, verse 31. Therefore what? Don't worry, be happy. Saying what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? 
For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Seek the kingdom of God as righteous. In other words, we're to maintain a, uh, a pursuit of righteousness. To we are get into that place where it's perfected. It's what? Perfected, it's established, and it's settled. That's a part of your life. It's a part of my life. As a Christian, Christ-like, we are now falling into that place where our pursuit of righteousness must be perfected. It must be established, and it must be settled in you and in me that no matter what we go through, there will be a pursuit of righteousness. We will always look at what is the righteous act in this. What is the righteous outcome of this? Everything must be righteousness because our life must be righteous because the king of righteousness lives within me and you. Amen? And we know that righteousness is a fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2. especially if you're driving down a road and somebody cuts you off. Make sure your windows are up. <laughs> Forgive them and bless them, because you know what happens afterwards. Right? <laughs> Second Timothy 2, chapter 20, verse 20. <clears throat> Second Timothy. Anybody ever been offended? Don't raise your hand. Anybody been lied to? Don't raise your hand. Anybody been falsely accused? Don't raise your hand. This is the things where we go back and was there a response or reaction? Was there a response of righteousness or was there a reaction of lawlessness? You know? In verse 20, let's speak it. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and for some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now, this is powerful because what he's saying is if you'll cleanse yourself from old habits, things of the past, things that we used to pursue more than righteousness. Amen? You know, things that we take more time on instead of pursuing of righteousness. If we're not putting righteousness in everything that we do, even at our workplace and everything else, then how are we going to be a servant and a witness of what is true? Amen? Uh, again, that's where he says, cleanse yourself from the latter, the things that we put more time to or pursue to try to perfect. You know, and, and, and again, there's nothing wrong in an area. If you're a hairdresser, you want to be a good hairdresser. If you're a mechanic, you want to be a good... So you're pursuing things, but in that you are pursuing righteousness first so that when you are perfected and settled and established in righteousness, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, righteousness will be with you. Whether you are a nurse, a doctor, no matter what it is, as long as that pursuit of righteousness is a priority to you in your life, everything will work to the good. Amen? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Let's go a little further. Verse 22, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. So you got to be careful who you associate with, right? 
So you want to hang out with people that are in the same pursuit as you are. Verse 23, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Well, it's because they are lack of pursuit of righteousness. Hosea chapter 10. Is everybody there? Verse 12. Hosea 10, verse 12. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap what? Mercy. How many of y'all need mercy? Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. So this pursuit of righteousness is seeking the Lord, and in this he's going to rain righteousness on you. It's wonderful. Because in his presence, that's what rain is expression about. When it rains, it means his presence. So as we seek him, we're in pursuit of righteousness. We're in pursuit of his presence. In his presence is his character. And there's an exchange for our self-righteousness and his righteousness. Philippians 3. Let it rain, his righteousness. Pursuit of righteousness. Philippians 3, verse 7. Let's sow it. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. And indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I already attained or am already perfected, but I what? I press on. In other words, he is in what? Pursuit. That I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So he is always on constant pursuit, as you and I should be always on a constant pursuit. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. So we see that there is a battle between self-righteousness and godly righteousness. And that battle is in us all the time. Amen. Proverbs 11. I believe that's what Jesus, when Jesus rebuked Peter, when he said, get behind me, Satan. Because <laughs> Peter's like, well, when G Jesus expressed him that yeah, he was going to be killed and so forth, right? And Peter says, no, man, not on my watch. You ain't dying on my watch, man. Jesus said, get behind me, you self-righteous thing. But he didn't say it in that way. But he said, get behind me, Satan, meaning self-righteous. <laughs> Proverbs 11. Everybody there? 
Is everybody okay? Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guard them, guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lusts. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and the hope of the unjust perishes. The righteous is delivered from trouble, and it comes to the wicked instead. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteousness righteous will be what? Delivered. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices, and when the wicked perish, there is jubilation. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. We're going to close at 1 John chapter 2. First John two twenty six. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. <coughs> and now, little children, abide in him. And when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of God. So if we are in a pursuit of righteousness, we have no fear or shame when he shows up. Amen? Because he will show up. You will either show up before him or he'll show up before you. But it doesn't matter. There's a show up. And when that show up, show up comes, you better yield up. <laughs> Amen? Hands up in the air, Holy Ghost, the race, I mean, a, a stick up. Pursuit of righteousness, it is a character of every Christian. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed be imparted and bring to remembrance our pursuit of righteousness for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.